Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. So when people died in the Old Testament, it is important to understand that they did not immediately go to heaven. They actually went down to the center of the earth. Uh, I have a big, thick video on that one about paradise and hell. Paradise and hell, you can watch that one. But in this video, I'm going to give you a little briefly about where people in the Old Testament, uh, after they die, that they did go to the heart of the earth. So they didn't go like up to the third heaven. We're going to look at the book of Luke chapter 23. And we will read verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. He asked him, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in notice paradise. So, in here, when Jesus died on the cross, the thief on the cross, he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And then Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise, he said. So then this thief on the cross, he said that he would be today with Jesus, right? Today he would be with Jesus. Today with Jesus. But where did Jesus Christ go? Look at Acts chapter 2 now. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. You're going to find out that in Acts chapter 2, Jesus Christ, he did go down to where the hell was. Acts chapter 2. And notice what the Word of God reads right here concerning about our Savior, Jesus Christ, in verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul, notice, in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. So this is speaking about Jesus Christ. Uh, if you look at verse 25, For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. So King David, the psalmist here, he is speaking about the prophecy of Jesus Christ that at verse 31, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in notice hell. So this was speaking about Jesus Christ. So in Acts chapter 2, there is no doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ, he went down below the earth where hell was located. So that would be in Acts chapter 2 and verse 27 and verse 31. So Jesus Christ said today, right, to the thief. And when Jesus Christ died that day, where did Jesus Christ go to? He went to hell. Now, we're going to look at the book of Ephesians as well, the book of Ephesians. Well, he must have went to heaven first. No, 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 no. Look at Ephesians. He had to go someplace else. Look at the book of Ephesians. If you don't know these verses, or the church never taught you this, it's because they don't know much about the Bible. See? Especially if the pastor claims to believe the King James Bible is perfect and doesn't know about this doctrine or actually denies it, that person actually does not know any Bible at all. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 9. Well, the context at verse 7 is Jesus Christ, right? So in Ephesians chapter 4, we know the context is Jesus Christ at verse 7, but look at verse 9. Now he that ascended, now that he ascended, okay, he did go to heaven, but look, what is it but that he also, what, descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So notice right here that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9, there is no doubt Jesus Christ, besides, he says, you won't leave my soul in hell neither have your Holy One see corruption, the grave. He was in the grave three days and three nights. As, and when he died, he had to go here first. So there's no doubt he had to go to hell first. And the thief on the cross, he had to be with Jesus that day. But he said, today with me in where? He said, paradise. 
Well, that don't make sense. There's no paradise in hell. Ah, look at the book of Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Look at Luke 16. Notice right here that there is such a place you can say. Notice that you see a place of torment on one side and a place of comfort on the other side. And you'll see Old Testament saints right here located at the same place where hell is located. Look at the book of Luke chapter 16. Look at verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments. Notice that there's this one person, the rich man, who's in hell. But look at this. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Notice right here that in hell this lost sinner is able to see Abraham. How can he see Abraham? if they're in the same place. But let's keep reading. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Notice he's able to speak to Abraham. So they're in the same place. Well, does that mean Abraham and the Old Testament saints are frying in hell? Well, let's keep reading. Look at verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is, notice, comforted, and thou art, notice, tormented. So notice right here, see that? Undoubtedly, Abraham and Lazarus, they're in a comfort place, and the rich man is in a place of torment. Okay, but what's this thing right here? There's no doubt now. Look at verse 26. And beside all this, between, notice, us and you, there is a great gulf fix. Oh, well, there's no doubt then they're in the same place because there's a great gulf that's between Abraham and the Old Testament saints with the rich man and lost sinners. There's no doubt there's, they're located in the same place. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. Notice right here that they could access to each other had there not been that little gulf in between them meaning they're definitely in the same location. See that? They're undoubtedly in the same location and same place. Not only that, we're also going to look at the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Well, the Old Testament saints, they went up to heaven. Uh, no, if, you're, if you have a pastor who teaches that, he doesn't know any Bible at all. Look at the book of 1 Samuel. And notice even a sat Satanist, a witch, would know better. <laughs> Look at 1 Samuel chapter 28, chapter 28, and verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 28, and we'll read verse 11. Then said the woman, here's a witch, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Bring me up, right? Samuel, meaning Samuel's below them. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? Now look at this. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending, like going up, out of the what? Earth. That means they're below the earth. Now she called them gods. But who are these so-called gods, she called? It's referring to Samuel. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with the mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. See that? It was Samuel. He's below them. Not only that, what are you going to do with Acts chapter 2? Go to Acts chapter 2 again. Go to Acts chapter 2. Oh, no, Old Testament saints. They went to heaven after they died. Uh, no, then how do you explain that one? Samuel's below. Uh, how do you explain the thief on the cross? Oh, well, Jesus was saying over here that you're going to be with me, me, particularly me, in paradise. Why? Why are you particularly with me in paradise? Because God the Father's up there. But I thought that uh, that's oneness, right? Jesus is not God the Father. So if you have a pastor who's against 
this teaching that, oh no, there's no such thing as paradise below the earth, and he screams on top of his lung and starts pounding the pulpit, and then you say, well, what about the thief on the cross? Today thou shalt be with me, me, Jesus said me, in paradise. Well, that was referring to God the Father. Isn't that oneness? And that pastor is basically admitting oneness right there. Oh, that will preach right there. So, me, Jesus directly said me right here. I guess with all the verses when he says, I, and then my Father, and then uh, the Holy Spirit shall send me, and stuff like that, he was referring only to the Father then, I guess. See, you can't deny it. You can't deny it. But look at the book of Acts chapter 2. And notice what King David himself said about right here in Acts chapter 2. And then look at verse 34. For David is not, what? Ascended into the heavens. Look at that. So notice right here that even David, so you got evidences right here that David was not up. Samuel was not up. They were below. Not only that, look at the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. There is no doubt there, there were saints below the earth. That would make a lot of sense. Look at John chapter 3. And we will read verse 13. And no man hath what? Ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Well, that's really plain now. So notice right here that John 3.13, it says no one. What are you going to do <laughs> during that time? This is during the time before Jesus died on the cross. You notice that? All of these are Old Testament references. You notice that? But where are they now? They're definite, they definitely went up. Because look at the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. How that he was caught where? Up into where? Paradise. Wait a minute. Jesus said that paradise, today you'll be with me. It's down here. But why is paradise up there? Simple. Remember, Jesus Christ, he descended first, but he ascended, right? That's why paradise is up here. That makes sense. Besides, after his resurrection, who also came up with him? Old Testament saints. Look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. See, the verses are undoubtedly loaded. It's loaded proving this teaching of Old Testament saints went below the earth. That's where they went to after they died. Paradise was below the earth. Then they eventually went up. Look at Matthew chapter 27. And notice what followed Jesus Christ when he resurrected, when he went up. Look at verse 52. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept, what? Arose. They went up. And came out of the graves when? After his resurrection. See that? Jesus descended first, but when he went up, they went up with him. There's no doubt about that. Now, people who really hate this doctrine of Abraham's bosom or paradise and hell, they will always quote two people. They, they will harp on two people. Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah. Okay? What are you going to do with this kind of argument? There are verses that says Enoch went up, Elijah went up. What are you going to do with these verses? Well, the simple answer is this. This is how you can easily debunk it, okay? What about these two people then? How are they going to argue about David and Samuel? Oh, they were the exceptions. They're the exceptions? Why can't we argue then this, that Enoch and Elijah were exceptions? See that? So it doesn't work either way. So they're in the same boat as you are, okay? Not only that... Now, there are two possible explanations for this. Two possible explanations is that one, Enoch and Elijah, it simply said that they were caught up or he was not for God took him. So simply, God may have taken them up into the air and then they just eventually disappeared. 
and then their soul was down here below the earth. Why? Because John 3, 13 said, no man hath ascended up into heaven, see? Or the second interpretation is this, which works out very well. The second interpretation is that these two were simply the exceptions. Oh, I don't believe that. What? No, it's simple. They were the exceptions because they were the exceptions to death. See that? These were the only two people who didn't die. Everybody died. See that? So because they, these two were the exceptions to death, that's why they were the exceptions to go below the earth or be in the grave. See that? It's that simple. Not only that, the verse says that no man hath ascended up into heaven. Enoch, Elijah did not ascend up. The Bible says God took Enoch. The Bible says Elijah, he was caught up by a whirlwind. You know what's so interesting, which kind of proves that those two were raptures then, and you have to prove multitude raptures. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says God will take us up, and it says that we are caught up. Same words exactly with Enoch and Elijah. No man ascends up into heaven. Lucifer was the one who tried at Isaiah 14, verse 13. I will ascend up uh, above the heights of the cloud into the stars. I will be like the Most High. He tried to do that. But you see, no one did except Jesus Christ. That's why, because God himself is the only one who can ascend up to heaven, that's the reason why you and I, Enoch and Elijah, what? God caught us up. See, no man can ascend. Only God himself can. So you have to take a God to take you up, to catch you up away. So with these two possible arguments, you see, there is no doubt. It doesn't change the fact that this doctrine is actually true. Because you got a wealth of verses. I don't know what you're going to do about those verses.